and welcome. Today's guest is a visionary entrepreneur, transformational teacher, high performance coach and consultant, sought after international speaker and trainer, and number one international best selling author who is regularly interviewed in publications and on podcasts and television networks. She has built multi-billion dollar ventures as well as seven figure companies that has helped more than 1.5 million people worldwide to live their best lives. She is dedicated to helping people unlock their X factor, be who they were born to be and create a life they love. Please welcome Maya Camarota. Hello, Ellie. Hello, hello. It is so good to see you. Wow, you have been busy. You have a lot going on there. Congratulations on all of your successes. Now, I understand that you were a successful corporate executive before you transitioned into all of these amazing accolades. So what inspired that, tr that transition into what you're doing now? Yes, absolutely. It's a, um, I think many of us have had this kind of experience where we're, we've become somewhat successful in a corporate career or successful in some area of our life. And although we're experiencing success, we're not fulfilled. Mm -hmm. And so I was having that. I had, you know, risen through the corporate ladder. I had an incredible career. I had a husband and a son and everything you could possibly want. I mean, from the outside looking in, you would think Maya has it all. And yet there was a part of me that was yearning for more. Mm. And I didn't know what that more was. And I felt guilty for wanting more. And I think that's something that's so common, you know, that you don't feel like you should have more or that you are even like, what, what more could there be when you have a husband and a son and a career and all the things like, what more is there? And there was, there was something that was missing and it all came together one day, you know, I, it was a summer Sunday afternoon and I'm, I'm in my office working because I would oftentimes work on Sundays and my three-year-old son was playing downstairs and I could hear him laughing and giggling with the nanny and all of me wanted to go downstairs and play with him. But there was a part of me that felt so stuck to the computer and stuck to doing what I was doing. And if I'm honest, I didn't even know if he would even choose me anymore yeah. because I hadn't been playful in so long. Yeah. And so, you know, as I'm doing this work, I get a ding on my computer and I realize, you know, I can't do this anymore. I don't know what I'm doing, but I can't do this anymore. And I grab the car keys, I run downstairs and I tell my son, you know, Hunter, mommy will be right back. And he says, mommy, mommy, take me with you. And I said, no, no, little guy, I'll be back. I'll be back very soon. And so I jump into the car and I drive out 20 minutes later, I'm in front of a red light and I don't remember how I got there. And as I turn the wheel to get on the on-ramp, a huge black SUV crashes into the side of, of my car and everything starts spinning. Everything's in slow motion. The, the SUV flies through the railing, through the green sign, down the embankment just a second before oncoming traffic. And as I'm seeing this, I'm, I'm thinking, please don't let that person die. Like, don't let there be a child in my car. Mm -hmm. And then my car's spinning and I'm buckling in my womb and I'm noticing the car seat that's right behind me. My son was nearly in there. And, you know, as this is everything spinning, I see visions of what I believe was my funeral. And I don't know if I'm going to come out of this alive. And I hear this voice or feel this voice in every part of my body. And it says, you didn't do what you came here to do. And I felt so much sadness and so much regret that I hadn't yet done what I came here to do. And I had done a lot in my life. I had run corporate teams and I had a leadership team of 300 and I had done so much. And so that was probably the first moment that I prayed to God. And I said, you know, if I make it out of here alive, I'll be her. I will be the woman I'm born to be. I don't know who that is. I mean, I don't know who I am without the titles and the roles and the mother and the sister and the wife and all of these things, but I will, I will be her if I make it out alive. And so you know, 20 minutes later, the police arrive and myself and the other woman are embracing and they look at us and they say, how did you get out of there? Because both top cars are completely totaled. And I knew there was only one reason we survived that day. And neither one of us had a scratch on us. And that was the beginning of me starting to recognize, you know, there's something more that I'm here to do. 
and I desire to do it. And I don't know who that is and I don't know what that is, but I'm going to go on a journey and figure it out. And so, so take, us, take us through some of that journey because that that's a profound experience. That moment of realization that if today were my last day, I haven't done what I came here to do. And then what is that? What does that look like? So how did you navigate that? And what was your process for starting to identify or unlock that, that thing that was within you that you know you're here to do? Yeah, such, such a great question. You know, for me, there was so much of me that was numb by that point. So, you know, I was, I wasn't playful. I wasn't, I, I really wasn't passionate anymore. There was so much that was numb inside of me. And then there were these, a couple things that I was really inspired by. At that point, you know, I'd been working with patients that had lifelong autoimmune illness and many of them through my coaching pro program had actually gone through spontaneous remission. And I was so inspired. I, I wanted to understand how patients with lifelong autoimmune illness have spontaneous remission. And so there was a fire inside of me that was so curious and so passionate and it brought me alive. And so I started to follow the fire. I started mm -hmm. to follow the passion. And whenever I would feel a little spark inside of me, I didn't know. I, I mean, if I'm honest, Ellie, I didn't know exactly what I was doing. I just knew I needed to be alive. And I had this second chance. I would now, I saw my life pass me by. I saw what I felt the regret and nobody ever wants to feel that level of regret that if your life is over, you haven't yet lived and you haven't done what you came here to do or shared with the people that you loved. You know, you don't want to live a life where you feel regret. And so I had that experience and I knew I just, I just have to figure this out. And the steps that I took were every time I felt that little flame inside me, that little fire, that little spark, that inspiration, that curiosity, I followed it. And it, was, it wasn't often that I felt it because I was so numb to so many things. And so when I felt it, I knew it. It was like, I love this, or I'm passionate about this, or I'm curious about this. And I would lean into that, that I call it now your life force, right? At then it was a curiosity, it was a inspiration, it was a passion. But that's where it started was following that passion, that inspiration, that little flame. So is that step one that you would advise someone who, who is feeling that emptiness, who's feeling that numbness, who's feeling this cannot be all there is to life, or how did I get here, or this is not the life I wanted. This is like to all those people that are feeling their life force just drain out of them, would you say step one, what would you love? Step Absolutely. one, what inspires you? Step one, what brings you joy and do more of that? Absolutely. It's, I mean, step one is always, what would, what would you love? And, and, you know, here's the thing, Ellie, because at the time I was blind, like I was blind, I was flying blind. So I don't even know that I would have known how to answer that at that time. I, I would have, I would have said, I don't want to work so hard. I don't want to work 80 hours a week. I don't want to be away from my child. I don't want to leave him in the morning before he wakes up and come home before he's gone, after he's gone to bed and then be ships in the night with my husband, who's also, you know, where we barely spend any time together. I, I knew I didn't want that. And so, so I was flying blind. Now I know the question to ask, which is precisely what you just shared, which is, what, what would you love? Like, if you, if you don't want that, what would you love? And I would say, I'd love to, you know, have dates with my husband. I'd love to work 40 hours a week and, and feel inspired and be an amazing leader that supports balance with home and work, right? And inspiration where people can live their best life and do their best work, but they're not compromising or sacrificing themselves. And so, yes, the first question is that I didn't know that question back then. So I just, navigated clumsily, just like, oh, oh, this feeling, that's it. I'll follow that. Oh, this feels good. More <laughs> of this, please. More yes, please. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I love that. And, you know, that's something that anyone can do, right? Anyone, regardless of where they are in their life. If, 
If you don't love what's going on, if you don't love your life, what would you love? Such a powerful question, Maya. Thank you for sharing that with us. Now, I, I mentioned in your intro, wow, you have shared the stages with the biggest and the best, whether that is with Tony Robbins or Mary Morrissey or Dean Graciosi or, or speaking on Necker Island to uh, people at Richard Branson's, people look at you and they say, well, of course she can do it. She was this successful career, corporate career woman who had it all. And now, of course, it's easy for her to be on these global stages. Um, but we all know it's not so easy. So the it, it's seldom how people think it is. Can you share a little bit more about your journey and maybe the moments where you struggled and how did you navigate them? Absolutely. You know, I think oftentimes we see people at certain points, well, we nobody saw me at the moments when, you know, I was losing everything. And, you know, I had, yes, I was successful in my corporate career, but then when I started out on my own and, you know, really had this vision and passion to help humanity in a big way, I wanted to support people not to get to the end of their life and feel like they hadn't lived it to really tap into who they were truly meant to be, who they're born to be, and not compromise or sacrifice or, you know, or have any excuse not to be themselves because I had done that for so long. And we don't see the moments where these people like Tony Robbins, Oprah Winfrey, all of these people, myself are on their knees, you know, struggling. And that had happened to me. I mean, there were so many moments where I fell to my knees and, you know, I, I had a successful career. When I left, I went on this journey and I was funding that myself. There were, we sold, I sold my house, I sold my boat, I sold my corporate clothes, my suits. I had, you know, thousand dollar suits as a corporate executive and I was selling them for $80, $60, $40 on Facebook Marketplace in a plastic bin. I'm sitting outside my house as we're putting my, my home that we're living in for sale as I'm thinking in my mind, I promise we're not going to be homeless. I promise we're not, you know, I have a child, I have a husband and I'm in my heart. I'm like, I know, I know we're not going to be homeless. I also know this is what it's going to take. And when the whole world, I mean, the whole world thought I was crazy. Like, you're going to do what? You're going to tell people what? You're going to share with them that they're, they're magnificent by design or they can live a legendary life or they're born for something or they have an X factor inside of them. And here, I'm sitting in my patio with my for sale sign in my house with plastic bins selling my suits so that I can make enough money to continue to pay our mortgage to continue to do the work that I'm doing. And so, you know, and that was just, that was one moment of time. And then there was another moment where I had invested all our life savings into what I believed was the answer. And you know, it was an online health company and I was going to be the chief innovation officer and I invested everything into it and then it didn't feel aligned. And then my entire life savings was threatened. You know, they threatened to take everything away. You know, my relationship, my marriage was struggling. I wasn't making, you know, I was afraid I was going to lose, lose my entire life savings and I had to create an image of myself of who in the in the vision of who I am as a world-class transformational teacher and coach, who am I? And how do I act in this very moment? How do I hold a dream and hold a vision? Because I know that this is, this is the work, stepping through the fear, taking the step, holding the vision, knowing, you know, like Tony Robbins and Oprah Winfrey and, and, you know, Walt Disney and so many people, they failed time and time and time again. But they held a vision and they held a dream and they knew that it would come true. And they had to become the person that was the dream before the dream could become a reality. So I had to be her, right? I'm like, we're almost there, honey, to my husband with my plastic bins. I'm like, we're almost there. And he goes, I don't know where there is, but I'm pretty certain this is not the way. Like this way with the plastic bins and all the things is probably not the way. And I, I'm thinking, 
it's just about to happen. I'm nearly there. Yeah, absolutely. So thank you for sharing those moments because I think we can all relate, right? We've all been in those moments where we're almost there. We're almost there. It's going to happen. I know it. I know it. I know it. It doesn't quite look like that. So how do I shift that? And I love that you're saying, be her now, be him now, be the person who's living that dream, show up as them, do the things they would do, eat the things they would do, behave the way they would they would behave to, to be the embodiment of that dream before the dream happens. So I love that you shared that with us. I think especially after the last two years of the pandemic, um, that is a tangible step that people in the audience can begin to implement. So how did you navigate all of those naysayers? You mentioned that everybody was saying that you were crazy. So how did you deal with that? Such a great question. And, you know, it's really about before anybody else can believe in you, you must believe in you. Before anyone else will choose you, you must choose you. And so I had to come to a place of knowing and believing more than anyone didn't believe. And I also recognize that I don't, I, I don't know who says this, but it's really great. Um, it's, I don't take criticism from people I wouldn't take advice from. Mm. So there's so many people out there that want to give you advice, right? And unless they are doing and being the person that I desire to be, the embodiment of the person that I desire to be, then I'm not taking criticism or advice from you. You must be living it in order for me to take that. And I knew the stories of the legends in the world and how they had fallen to their knees and gotten back up and fallen to their knees and gotten back up. And the fact that nobody believed in them. And I'm like, this is just that same story. I am that dreamer. I am that visionary. I know it to be true. I felt it and heard it in the car when my life could have ended. And so there was a part of me that knew it and I needed to hold it. and and almost not even share it publicly mm. so that I could continue to cultivate myself and cultivate my own confidence and conviction. And I would share it. I would share certain things with people who I knew would hold yeah. it. And then sometimes you share it and there's plenty of people who are naysayers, but I had to have the confidence and conviction that it doesn't matter what anybody else says because the only person, this is my dream. Yeah. It was given to me because it's my dream. It wasn't given to them. How are they ever gonna understand it, right? And so, you know, I believe it's, it's, and this is a message that I share all the time in my communities and when I coach and when I speak, it's, you must choose you first. You must believe in you first. And when you do, others will. But until you do, you can't expect anybody else to believe. You know, now it's very funny because now there are people, they're like, I knew she was going to make it. And I said, of course, hey, right? I of course. I remember that you were not so certain about that. <laughs> Yeah, all the people that say, oh, well, I knew it and I helped her. And you're like, huh? <laughs> you helped me by doubting me and helping me develop that fire that was like, I'll, sh I'll show you because I'm going to do it and I'm going to be her. Yes. So I love that, that you just uh, segued into that inner fire and that showing you. So was that a tool that that you were really able to harness that inner fire mixed with the I will show you? Because I think so many people are looking for where do they get that belief? Where can they choose them? Where where you know, if they're navigating the the self-doubt and the criticism and they haven't yet developed that certainty muscle that you are talking about. Yeah, such a, such a great question. You know, it was less, I, I want to say in the beginnings of my career and then through my career, it was a lot about, you know, there used to be this fire that would develop based on like, she's young, she's a woman, she probably can't do it. We'll give her a shot. And then there was this, I'm going to show you, I will show you, I will prove to you, I'm going to do it. And there was a lot of fire that was built in that. As I transitioned out of that, it became, I got to show me. I got to show you. 
this is not about showing anybody else. I showed everybody else and I became really unhappy because I was following a path that was based on what they were saying versus based on what I knew. And it wasn't about showing them what was possible. It was about showing me what was possible. And I want to know, I know people talk about, you know, we have infinite potential and infinite possibility. And, you know, I frequently talk about like, that's just true. Every We've got infinite potential and it's accessing that, but really it's our capacity to be able to. And my capacity is based on me. And it's based on every step that I'm willing to take to move closer and challenge and move into my fear and befriend it. And so it really became about proving it to me and being the woman that I desire to be, not what anybody else wanted me to be, not what anybody else said I could or couldn't be, but who I knew I could be. And, you know, when I think about the step that somebody takes, it's creating a very powerful image of who you are and what you believe in and what you stand for. And I knew that if I was, and I have this image, world-class transformational teacher, that in my, by my beingness, I can transform lives. It's not because of what I say. It's not because of what I do, but it's because of who I am. And I believe we all have that capability. And if that was true, if this image is true and I held this image and if this is true, then who am I in this moment? And what do I choose in this moment? Who am I as a wife? Who am I as a mother? Who am I as a friend? Who am I as a colleague? Who am I as a client? Who am I as this? And I have, and I get to choose that every day and it's not perfect, but the fire is built by creating this image and persona of the person that I know I can be. We, we are given a dream. It's an echo of what was given to us. And so it's it's holding that dream and vision and making that so important and so powerful and then leaning into that every day. And for people who are watching and they say, oh, well, that sounds overwhelming or scary. You mentioned leaning into the fear. What is one way that they can do that? It's taking the step that you can take, no matter what it is, no matter how small it is, no matter how big it is, you take the step that you can take right now. And you realize a lot of times fear shows up as doubt, as delay, as distraction, as, you know, your body, you know, sometimes they call it DEFCON and it's, you know, your, your mouth goes dry, your body shakes and you just, you just take the very next step because you're not given another step until you take the one that's right in front of you. And so all you have to do is take one more step every day. That's it, one step. I love that. You're not given the next step until you take the step right in front of you. So just take one step. So powerful, so powerful. Now I touched on this earlier because it's quite, common people love to look at you and say oh well of course maya can do it well that's just maya well maya's a unicorn well <laughs> you know you hear that time and time again that the magic that you create the communities that you create the lives that you transform the way that you show up in the world, the doors that that open to you, the opportunities that open to you, people will say all the time, well, that's just Maya. So what, what do you say to them? What do you believe is the main driver of your success? And do you think it's possible for them to achieve something similar? Absolutely, absolutely. And I, I've heard it so many times. Maya has an X factor. And not everybody has that. And so don't do exactly what Maya does because she has an X factor. And so you should do it this other way. And one, I think that's BS. <laughs> and, you know, the main, the main driver of my success and my fulfillment is that I show up as me. I show up as the person that I am created to be. And I'm, and I'm convicted and I'm confident and I'm silly and I'm goofy and I'm funny and I love to sing and I love to laugh and I love to dance. And who knows what's gonna happen sometimes when I'm doing what I'm doing because I just allow myself to be me. And I believe that every person, when, they, when you allow yourself to be who you were created to be, there's a reason why you are here. 
You were created for a reason. It's not by accident that you are here. Every single individual is unique and has a, and it's about tapping into that X factor, that uniqueness, that thing that you uniquely are here to be and do, and then sharing that with others. And when you do, you have, you have uncommon success, the success that people say, oh my gosh, how did she do that? How did he do that? Because you're you and the world needs you. Amen. So that authenticity, that alignment of being you and showing up in the world as you in your divine glory that you were made to, to have and be and do and exude. So powerful. Really, do you. Be you. Show up as you. That's what you're saying. Mm. That. So and I, I think so many people get lost in the external, right? They're, and you alluded to it earlier when you said, who am I without the titles? Who am I without the corporate titles and, and the, the labels and the possessions and the accolades? You took that time to come home to yourself and really become the person that you were divinely made to be. Absolutely. And that's something we can all do. So thank you for sharing that because that is another really actionable tool to be you. Amazing. Now, part of being you and being this phenomenal being that you are is the habits and routines that you have. You you mentioned that you have your convictions, you have these, these values and you show up aligned in that. Tell us, what are your routines? What are your habits? What are your non-negotiables that contribute to your success and your impact in the world? So I love to keep everything simple and across my days and years and I've had many different routines that I think have supported me to be successful in many ways. And the number one habit, routine, thought is would I love this? Mm. If I would love it, you know, I have meditated for hours in the morning and I do breath work and I do celery juice and I do all the things and I have all the things, right? And then there was a period of time where I'm doing all the things and I have a morning routine that's two hours long. Uh -huh. And then I realized, I'm not actually loving it. And so as soon as I just shifted and I said, would I love this? And so I wake up, I wake up at around five, 5.30 in the morning. I do breath work. I go and take my dog to the dog prairie park. That's this beautiful place because I love it. And I get to walk with her for an hour as the sun comes up and then I come home and I, and then, you know, I've done my meditation with my breath work. And so, so now I get to have breakfast with my son and my husband. And then we take my son to school and, and I just ask myself, would I love this? And if I love it, then I'll do it. And I start my day with what I love. And I would ask every person, it's, it's, you know, you can do many things to help you be successful in the, in the day. The number one thing you, you can do is ask yourself, would I love it? Does this make me come alive? And if it does, then do it. Full circle. It's a, that's a full circle moment of what would I love? And such a simple, beautiful sentiment to use as your, your bumpers, to use as your North Star. What would I love? Does this make me happy? Do I love this? Does this bring me alive? So beautiful. Now, you mentioned that each and every person you believe has that X factor, has that thing that they were uniquely born to do. How do you help someone unleash that? I believe that we are born for something and we are given the experiences in our life to support us to do that very thing. And so all the stories in my life, all the trials and the tri tribulations and the triumphs, 
were all gifted to me so that I can share and so that I can be who I am uniquely in the world. No one has had the same exact human experience as I have had. Some have had some similar, but they haven't had my story, my stories, my experiences. And so each person has those and it's tapping into what is my unique life experience and how has that made me an expert, an expert, because I'm an expert at me. Yeah. I'm an expert at this, right? And I'm, I'm fortunate that I'm a better expert at myself now than I was before, because I did not know myself that much back then. But, but you know, we all have that very special something within each one of us and it's tapping into those stories, those messages, that thing, you know, when I went through part of my curriculum is helping people come to the end of their life. Just imagine you're at the end of your life. You have hours a day to live. What do you want to share? Don't wait until that moment to do that thing. We all have something inside of us that if our life was over tomorrow, you would want to make sure you did or said that thing. And so I support people to really tap into what is that thing? And now let's cultivate and craft. You have life experience. That is the reason why that message is important to you. I have a life experience. That is the reason why, that is the reason why being born for something is resonant for me, right? I hear, I hear this message. You didn't do what you were created to do. You didn't do what you were born to do. And I'm like, oh no, I mean, I got to do that thing. I was created for that thing. I don't want to get to the end and realize I didn't do the thing. I didn't become the person that I was supposed to become, right? And so, you know, one, it's tapping into that at the, you know, starting with the end in mind. If life was over tomorrow, who do you want to be? What would you want to say? What would you want to share? And then supporting with a process to really tap into that. And then the other part of this is really tapping into the life force that is living and breathing each and every one of us, what you're passionate about, what makes you angry, what makes you sad, what makes you light up, what makes you fall in love. You know, we have a life force that is our energy that is consistently communicating with us. And so when we develop a relationship, you know, my X factor challenge came because somebody did tell other people, Maya has an X factor and nobody else has it. And I, and I'm thinking, People paid to hear you tell them they don't have an X factor. I can't believe it. I'm going to I'm going to show everyone they've got an X factor, right? And so I listened to the life force and the information that it was sharing with me, and so oftentimes our X factor and our passions are born out of things that we weren't able to express at some point. And so helping us reconnect to that life force and that message and that mission that each one of us has. Each one of us has a mission to fulfill on this earth in this lifetime. And I get thrilled every time I am face to face for you, for example, that you have a mission. And I get so thrilled to know, oh my gosh, I get to meet with Ellie today and she's got a mission and I have a mission. And I'm so thrilled that we get to come together and support one another and make the, these dreams come true. Each one of us with our own unique mission and beautiful in its own right as it contributes to the whole of the universe. Now, you, you referenced this X Factor challenge that you just had. Tell us a little bit more about some of your programs and services. So I have a variety, of which I love. I have a live event that I do multiple times a year. It's called Born for This Live. And it's to support you, to support people, to tap into that thing that they are born for right? That life that is yearning to express the moreness, the more passion, more freedom, more prosperity, more creativity, more love, more, more all of it. And so for anyone who is seeking more, who knows there is something that I'm born for. There's a thing that I'm meant to share with the world. There's an impact I'm meant to make. And maybe I'm not making that impact yet, but I know it's yearning and burning inside of me that I, I want to express it to the world then that's born for this live. And it's a three-day event, totally immersive and transformational. People's lives change, not only at the challenges, but then also at the three-day immersive event. And I also have, I also have a elite coaching program. And this is a year-long program where I support people throughout the year through additional immersions and, you know, coaching and laser coaching and mastery calls and really supporting us to understand one, you're born wealthy. 
to, you're born for this. There's something that you're born for. You're born extraordinary. And you're born to align with the forces of nature. And so we go through this curriculum throughout the year. Additionally, I have a mastermind. It's called Living Legendary. And Living Legendary is all about living the legendary life and cultivating and creating the experiences in your life that support you to know that you are living a life that you absolutely love that's beyond the normal. It's not just the everyday. It's it's every year and every couple months we're doing something and creating something epic together. And so creating an epic life together and supporting one another to create these incredible legendary lives. And so those are a handful of the programs. And then we also, I also have When Love Speaks, which is where I support people to cultivate that message, that story that lives within them and share it with the world about when love spoke to and through them, because love speaks to and through each and every one of us in unique and beautiful ways. And sharing that with the world is so beautiful so that people can tap into that, that message that lives within them and that understanding that love does speak to and through each and every one of us in different ways. So beautiful, all of the ways, so many different ways that people can get into your universe, that can that they can work with you. Um, so X Factor and Born for This and Living Legendary and your elite coaching program. And of course, When Love Speaks. Amazing. Yeah. And you mentioned really helping people cultivate that story, cultivate their message. Now, you took that even one step further and created a beautiful gift to the world, a beautiful book compilation called When Love Speaks. And that is a compilation of 44 stories, these beautiful messages of people who have gone through your programs, these beautiful souls sharing this message that you have helped them to unlock within themselves. It is incredibly powerful that you didn't let their stories die within them, but you created this beautiful platform for them to share those messages with the world. Now, When Love Speaks is available on all of the platforms. You can go to Amazon and get it. I love that it was even picked up by Rolling Stone magazine. Now, what was that like for you to know that, that this gift that you're creating was picked up by Rolling Stone? And I understand a few other magazines as well. Absolutely. Yes, it was. And that was, that was a beautiful... It was a beautiful testament to the extraordinary humans and the extraordinary stories that were shared in that. You know, I, I believe we're meant to live our legacy and not just leave it. And these stories are an example and the embodiment of, of these extraordinary humans that are living their legacy. And to have it featured in Rolling Stone, to have it featured in other magazines, to have it featured on ABC and different news stations, it was beautiful and it was beautiful for all the members that participated and just such a beautiful celebration where, you know, many of these things were not expected. It wasn't expected that it would have this, you know, we, we loved it and we definitely had a vision for it and we, but to have those moments, those surprising, beautiful moments that you dream happen, it was really incredible. The power of story the power of sharing those messages that you don't want to take to the grave. So thank you for cultivating that. Thank you for sharing that with the world. It is a beautiful, beautiful uh, testament. It's a beautiful, moving gift to the world. Now, earlier I touched on some of the incredible people that you have had the honor and to who stand shoulder to shoulder with in changing lives. What's the best advice that <laughs> any of them have shared with you? There's so, there's so much. I believe from Mary Morrissey, it's what would you love? 
What would you love? And that it's so simple. I believe there's a lot of information out there. And to find the moments that hit so, it's like, that's the nugget. That's the one. And so, you know, Mary Morrissey talks about, you know, what would you love? And that the circumstances of your life are are your curriculum. That is perfect. And that things are soul-sized. I love this. Whatever challenge you're going through is soul-sized. How many of us have felt like things are too big for us sometimes? It's never too big. It's the exact right size for who you're becoming. And so I love that. And then, you know, Tony, it's life's happening for you. And that was my step until I understood that life happens through me right? But understanding that life happens for us and through us is super powerful. Nothing's happened to me. It's happening for me, for my growth, for my development. You know, um, another mentor and coach and colleague, uh, Bo Eason, he really talks about like having this presence and being that presence and connecting to that primal part of ourselves. And that's been a really big influence for me as well. And, you know, and then some of them, it's, it's really about who they embody it's not necessarily about the specifics of what they share, but their authenticity as they share it. And so, you know, I've had so many moments, you know, whether it's Dean or Tony or Mary or Bo or so many other, so many others. Um, it's who they embody and how they hold a presence for me. I just was communicating to a colleague and a mentor of mine recently, and I just sent a message thanking them for holding that space in my heart and in my mind of what's possible. And again, not about what they say, not about what they do, but it's that they hold the space of possibility for me. And I love that. I can just think of them and know, you know, it's possible. Yeah, holding the space of possibility. So beautiful. What's something that you learned the hard way <laughs> that you <laughs> wish someone would have shared with you earlier? I think I learned, I'm going to be honest. I think I learned everything the hard way. I think I learned it all the hard way. And that's why I do what I do because it's not that hard. It's actually quite simple. And what's not easy is that the way that we learn and understand the world is backwards. You know, we believe that there's lack and there's no lack. We believe that money's bad and it's not bad. We believe that we lack love and there's no lack of love. We believe that we're not unique and we're 100% unique. And it's all illusion. And the truth is that we are, we were born rich. We were born wealthy in every dimension. And it's becoming aware of it. It's becoming aware of the prosperity and the wealth and relationships and love and, and abundance and vitality. It's only our level of awareness that that is the opportunity. It's not that there is a lack. And so that's definitely something that I continue to learn and learned the, learned the hard way. I learned the hard way. Um, but when you learn the hard way, you really know. Yeah. Yeah, that that lends itself to that conviction and that certainty that you spoke about earlier. So you also mentioned that when you work with your clients, part of the process that you take them through is taking them to the end of their life. Let's take you to the end of yours. So you've come to the end of your life best lived. You've left it all on the field. You have done what you came here to do. You have been the person you were born to be. What do you want them to say about you? They say she lived, she laughed, and she loved. And so it is. So it is. 
Now, how can people get in touch with you? How can they connect with you? How can they learn more about your programs and services? They can go to mayacamarota.com. That's my website. They can find me on social media at Maya Camarota on Instagram and then also on Facebook. And those are the those are the best ways. Amazing. Everyone run out and get into proximity with this powerhouse. You want to be in her world. So grab a copy of When Love Speaks, uh, learn more about her programs and services, get into her communities. Um, She's a beautiful, beautiful soul, and your life will never be the same. So Maya, as we start to wrap up today, are there any parting words you'd like to share with the audience? Absolutely. There's something that you were born for that nobody else can be or do. There's a life that you love that is yearning to express through you. So go be her be him, live that dream, and be who you were born to be. Amen. Maya, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for the work that you do in the world. Thank you for the light that you shine into the world. Thank you for being the full embodiment of you, for leaning into the fear, for taking the uncomfortable action in those moments when you were on your knees. Thank you for holding the vision and the dream of the life that you can have and the, the lives that you can, uh, that you can impact, the change that you can make, the good that you can do into this world. Thank you for showing up every single day as you for living your legacy now, for being who you were born to be. Thank you, Ellie. It's been such an honor and a privilege, and I feel so, so blessed and honored to be here with you. And and I, I love and adore you, and thank you so much for having me. Thank you for being here. Till next time. 